Continuing our conversation now with Malusi Ngala. He's a researcher from Corruption Watch. They're giving us some insight into a report that's going to be released online at 10 o'clock this morning. And uh, the report is entitled, It is Time to Act. Malusi, again, thank you for staying with us just to talk a little bit more about this report. So corruption in vehicle licensing, something that we've tried to address quite a lot here on the program, <clears throat> particularly when it comes to every aspect of vehicle licensing, bribing the instructors, uh, getting your vehicle license re renewed. Um, is it still very much the case that no bribe, no license, and how long has this been going on for? Well, we've been receiving these reports since inception, um, that's since 2012, and, you know, it's exactly what you say, Lian. It's a case of if you're not able to pay 2,500 or in some cases 3,000 or even 3,500, you will not get your um, license sure. as a prospective driver. This is what the reporters are telling us. Um, it's, it's an unwritten rule when you go to these um, license centers that if you're not willing to cooperate with the officials, regardless of whatever systems are in place, you just have to pay. Yeah. I mean, we're looking at some of the, the, the figures there, um, you know, and, and, and viewers can very much so see this at home as well, of this, uh, the, the issues of, of, of corruption in state-owned entities, and, but we, we're focusing in on the licensing issue, and this is something that you obviously make all these departments aware of your findings. You, you give it to them, you talk to them, but... Do you ever see anything being done with the research that you bring out? I mean, you know, um, officials will show an interest in the work that we do. Um, the most cooperative department thus far has been the basic, uh, the Department of Basic Education. Um, you know, but and then lately we've been working with the South African Police Service in terms of work that we are doing um, in that institution. So. You know, it's, it's just one of those situations. We just hope for the best. We communicate, let them know exactly what's happening in, a, in, in these various departments or various sectors. And um, based on their willingness, then we may collaborate on um, initiatives that seek, that seek to stem the flow of corruption. Yeah. I, I want to ask my director if he can put the, um, the, the state-owned enterprises slide back on. Um, because SOEs are an ongoing concern. They, they are. However, we're actually seeing a little bit of an improvement if I looked at those numbers and the drop from uh, uh, 2017 to 2018. We'll see if we can get them up while you're speaking. Here we go. Um, bribery was 36%, is down to 20%. Uh, then we can also see the irregularities in employment was 14% in 2017. It's now down to 6.7%. However, irregularities in procurement has increased 36% to 44%. So, you know, as much as there is a negative picture, there are a bit of positives coming out of this. There are, but we also need to um, take into a consideration that um, the overall number of reports that, re that we have received pertaining to corruption in state-owned enterprises has increased. So that has some, um, somewhat affected the mm. other figures. But yes, no, it is um, a good story to tell um, when you think about some of these figures dropping. But procurement has always been primarily an issue within state-owned uh, state entities. Mm. And we see that this still continues, this pattern still continues, where you have uh, businesses that have preferential treatment or businesses that are, um, are more than willing to pay kickbacks to officials. Right, Malusi, I want to, before I let you go, just touch on the health sector because this is something that affects every single person. And in fact, not that I'm going to ask you to speak about it, but just on a side note to make it you know, very real. We're actually going to see the Treatment Action Campaign who are going to be marching today um, against corruption and demanding the removal of former health MECs and current members of the provincial legislature, Kadani Mchlango and Brian Hlongwe. Um, this is, you know, uh, people taking this into their own hands and saying, that the health sector cannot be abused the way it is and people need to be accountable for what is happening. So having said that, your analysis of the health sector and corruption there. Um, this is the first time that we look at this particular sector. Um, I mean, 
Yeah, I think well, every South African can talk about an experience that they've had in a clinic or hospital. But, you know, there are those South Africans that are extremely vulnerable. Um, the Kokos, the Mkulus of, um, of our society who go to these clinics and hospitals hoping that they'll be assisted. But what you find there is that officials um, will ask them for bribes, you know, to get a basic medicine. Um, in some instances, what we also see is that um, staff members will steal medical equipment or even medication and sell it off to drug dealers who then in turn make drugs such as Nyaupe. So it, it is of, uh, of great concern to us as Corruption Watch and that's why we are actually launching a campaign that will look into um, health issues. Okay. Just finally, Malusi, uh, this year the document is stating, and, and again I quote, in this year's edition of the Analysis of Corruption Trends or ACT report, we reveal that although the overall statistics we present are lower than the previous edition, the outlook remains glum. Now, my question to you is, you know, we saw some of these numbers dropping, which, which I thought is a good sign, but is this a sign that people are becoming complacent, that they're actually not reporting it, that they're actually not speaking out anymore because they feel that nothing is being done? Um, or, you know, what, what is it indicative of and why do you still feel that the outlook is glum, even though we're seeing a reduction? Um, I mean, Leanne, just look at those areas of concern. So it's schools, you know, that speaks to our, our future, um, youth, We've got the South African police service that are supposed to protect us on our streets and our homes. It's health. We rely on our clinics and hospitals to provide us with, um, with um, health, good health facilities, um, state-owned enterprises. They are quite vital to our economy. So, I mean, the list goes on and on. And so to have over almost 2,500 South Africans saying that they are experiencing a great deal of problems with these sectors. It, it tells you that you know, the fight against corruption still continues, and hence this is the ACT report. This is the report that calls on South Africans to continue to blow the whistle on corruption yeah. and to always be on guard, to be watchful, and that you know, we should never let up because our responsibility never ends. Nice way to leave it. Thank you, Malusi. Thank you so much for talking to us here on the program. Malusi Ngala is a researcher from Corruption Watch. He's giving us insight into a report that's going to be released in uh, just over an hour and a half's time. And uh, it'll be online, I imagine, on your website, Corruption Watch? Yes. Um, to be able to view the report, it will, um, you can go to www.corruptionwatch.org.za and uh, we'll have hard copies as well. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks very, very much, Manusi. Right, we're going to take a...